Welcome everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, no matter, depending on where you are in the world. Um, we are super, super excited to kick off the webinar this evening. And I, I am Lisa Valerio, I'm the founder of Phoenixia Foundation, and my co-founder Lonnie Hessen is here with us this evening um, and is Dr. Dean Melanta uh, this morning in the Philippines. I'm gonna let Lonnie kick us off and give a little background introdu introduction to Phoenixia, and then I'll do an introduction to Francis, and then he'll kick us off uh, with the webinar this evening, this morning. Hi everyone, we're so glad you joined us. Thank you for being here. I am so honored as always to be part of the Phoenixia Foundation team. Uh, the Phoenixia Foundation is a nonprofit organization based here in the United States, but primarily doing outreach to the Philippines. Uh, Phoenixia is a flower that is part of the daisy family, and uh, the Phoenixia species of daisy is found only on the island of Mindanao in the Philippines, which is very exciting and cool. So the daisy family is found worldwide. So that is the link. We as the Phoenixia team are committed to helping children and their families thrive. And we do this by providing outreach work uh, in person and live when we can. Um, but during this pandemic, the way that we're providing our support is via these webinars. And we're so happy that you've all been joining us every week to talk about various topics that have to do with child development and family wellness um, and all kinds of, you know, question and answer sessions that we've been able to host. They've been wonderful for us and hopefully for you. So with that, I'll hand it back to Lisa to introduce Dr. DiMolanta, and we're so happy to have you here. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone. Um, a little bit about Dr. DiMolanta. Um, he uh, has so many facets that I'm just so excited to share with you. His interests are so varied that he is in every committee and major event that you can name. He has, a master's, he has mastered the art of multitasking, but one of his greatest challenges to date is being a Phil Pediatric Society Board of Trustees and head of the PPS, PSCAP Task Force on the Mental Health for Children and Youth. Through his maneuvering and through weaving partnerships, the task force has managed to engage all 12 PPS chapters nationwide for the rollout of a module for pediatricians on mental health. They are now currently working on a module for parents and educators. He obtained his medical degree at the UERM MMC Internship and Pediatric, Pediatric Residency at the St. Luke's Medical Center, Fellowship in Developmental Behavior Pediatrics at UPPGH. He pursued his international fellowship, clinical observation, in various developmental pediatric centers in the U.S., including the Children's Hospital Boston of Harvard Medical School and Cornell University. He is a fellow and member of the Board of Trustees of the PSDBP, and currently he is the head of the section of developmental and behavioral pediatrics at, the second, at, at two of St. Luke's medical centers. Among his many advocacies closest to his heart is putting up the Children's Dream Foundation in Baguio in 2003, and then joining us as an advisory board member of the Phoenixia Foundation three years ago. So let's give him a warm welcome, and we are so honored again to have him here this evening to talk about his prescription for play and with the focus on music this evening. So with that, I'm gonna, um, Turn off my video and Dr. DiMolanta, I'll let you present and I'll be here helping answer questions and I'll come back when we're ready for the Q&A. So folks, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. We'll take time at the end for you to be able, uh, for Dr. DiMolanta to answer some of your questions. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Lisa, for your kind introduction. And Lani, I'd like to start uh, my presentation with a prayer. Lord, let me be the change I want to see to do with strength and wisdom all that needs to be done and become the hope that I can be. Set me free from my fears and hesitations. Grant me courage and humility. Fill me with spirit to face the challenges and start the change I long to see. Even if I am not the light, I can be the spark in faith, service and communion. Let us start the change we want to see, the change that begins in me. Amen. So as uh, Lisa and Lani have mentioned, this is our third of a six-part series 
on the prescription for play. It's how we can bring back play into the lives of our children. And this tonight and this morning, because we are being viewed uh, both uh, in uh, the U.S. and here in the Philippines, we're going to discuss about the importance of music. So this will be my outline to talk about the connection of music and the brain, benefits of music for children while they're growing up, reasons why music can help children with special needs, music for all ages, and fun ways to add music to our everyday activities, plus music education in the time of this pandemic. Well, first off, uh, I'd like to say hello to my 90-year-old mom who's listening now. She's also a pediatrician. They're in Baguio City with my two sisters and brother. Uh, my sisters are celebrating their birthdays this week. One was yesterday, the other next Sunday. Plus, to thank my nephew for lending his guitar over here, Gio. So uh, let me say that music has a big part in our families. So why, why is it so? The very first music that a child hears is the mom's heartbeat, okay? So from the time uh, that he is uh, in the womb, he can already connect to the heartbeat that the mother's uh, heart will be every day, every day he'll be listening to. That's why we know that singing and music will play an important role in our, our culture. And with this presentation, you'll find music present in many aspects of our lives. Theater, television, movies, during worship, holiday celebrations, in government and military ceremonies. At home, music can become part of our family cultures, a natural part of our everyday experiences. When parents share musical experiences with children and teens, including listening and or even dancing to music, as well as singing songs together, it has a positive effect on parent-child relationships. Music education is important in child development because music will help the brain make connections between the right and the left sides. And we know for a fact that during the first six years of life, anything that we learn will actually help our brain make more neuronal connections. And it helps connect motor, which is part of moving, and cognitive part of thinking, development, creativity, and personality. Music is important for social development. Why is that so? Because music will provide so many great opportunities for children to develop socially. And as children play musical games, they dance, they make music together, they learn to be friends. They also help children connect to their feelings. When they're sad, when they're angry, uh, when they listen to a beat, and we don't have to buy expensive musical instruments. We can start playing with our pots and pans in the kitchen. Anything with a beat, okay, will actually help a child learn rudiments of music. It also helps children to be creative. And in terms of brain development, musical performance is every bit as important educationally as reading or writing. So what are the things that uh, help our brain when we introduce new music? The brain areas that respond to music will include our auditory cortex, which actually processes and differentiates between the sounds, our cerebellum, especially parts that handle coordinated movements, such as keeping rhythm, and the cerebrum, which memorizes and recalls music. Einstein learned to play the violin as a young child, and a study of his brain showed unusually strong connections. And if you will remember, in my last lecture, I mentioned that Einstein was thought to be deficient because he wasn't talking. But the father gave him a violin and he learned that, plus a compass for which he was fascinated. And that was the beginning of all his mathematical uh, skills, which he learned. Early musical training increased the gray matter in the cerebral cortex, particularly in the sensory motor area of the brain, which is shown here. 
what are some of the benefits? It improved auditory skills, increased spatial intelligence, it improved language learning, improved motor skills, increased memory, and there was a slight IQ advantage for college students, plus better language processing abilities in senior adults. Researchers from Vanderbilt University were able to establish that musicians, more often than other people, have both right and left hemispheres of their brain involved at the same time, and they are equally active. So we know for a fact that the left hemisphere of our brain is important for speech, recognition of letters, words, elements of the whole part, it makes us aware of movement, movement combinations, memorization of words and phrases, and logical thinking. Whereas a right hemisphere will de uh, develop your music, your rhythm, intonation of speech, visual perception, automated motion, memorizing music, pictures and smells, and responsible for intuition. Research findings showing that from infancy, Children are responsive to listening to music and the experience significantly contributes to language development. Hence, I always tell many of the parents for them to sing songs to their children, especially the mothers, grandmothers, caregivers, because they have a high pitched sound, which when done repeatedly will be something that a child will remember. Music has a positive effect on the development of other cognitive functions, including attention, visual, spatial perception, and executive function. Using brain imaging techniques in research conducted over the past few years resulted in the conclusion that music activates every known part of the brain. And this applies to all of us when we listen to music. For musicians, the act of playing an instrument not only activates the brain, but also influences our brain development. Even simply listening to music will activate areas of the brain associated with empathy, positive feelings, and pleasure. Elaine Winter said, so many benefits accrue to young children through music because brain development is so rapid. It's like learning a second language. Hence, during the first six years of life, it is best that we introduce music and introduce a child to all concepts that he has to learn, such as I mentioned during our sports series, that any uh, activity that they learn before six, they become very good at. A child without any language delay can learn up to six languages. And so are all our Olympic gold medalists who learned their craft before six years old. So what are some of the benefits? While growing up, your children are going to be exposed to music and songs which will play an important aspect of their culture. It helps improve brain power. And what does, how does that happen? Students who are exposed to music while growing up excelled better in academics and than those who were not. Because music helps in stimulating the part of the brain that is responsible for reading, math and emotional development. There were studies that also showed that when you teach math uh, to a child who has learning to play the piano or any musical instrument, it becomes easier for them because math is, has a certain, uh, when, you, when, when you listen to it, it's two fourths, three fourths or four fourths. So it's an exact thing. By playing that with your piano or singing, then they get to correlate learning math concepts. The best way to help children overcome this is by encouraging them how to play a musical instrument or be part of a singing group. This will help them develop their social skills, such as how to relate with people, how to work with a team, leadership skills, discipline, and how to appreciate rewards and achievement. Also, uh, it can help build their confidence. And why is this? As I always mention again to many of the parents, if there's one thing you want to buy for your children, but you can't, it's self-esteem. So it's not giving them false praises, but actually telling them, thank you for your effort. You're not saying you're very good, you're so smart. You don't say that. What you say is, 
thank you for all the effort you put in learning this musical instrument, in learning how to sing. And then they will have a full sense of achievement. Also, whether it is writing the lyrics to a song or practicing a new way to play the guitar, your children are going to tap into their inner creative spirits by learning music. Next slide, please. It should be here. Are you not yeah, seeing okay. it? You want to? Children okay. also learn how to work together with others while making something as beautiful as music. So it teaches them the virtues of patience and how it can affect others. Skills such as songwriting, singing, stage performance will help your child develop social skills, which in turn help them express themselves. And Children will need a lot, lot of practice. So learning how to play a musical instrument will be, or become a better singer will require discipline and patience. When children pick up this habit, it teaches them the importance of discipline and following through. They know that in order to get better, they need to put, it, put in the time. And this helps them become better disciplined and pursue their goals. So it was said, I would teach children music, physics, and philosophy, but most importantly, music, for the patterns in music and all the arts are the keys to learning. What are some reasons why music helps children with special needs? It tends to be one of the top motivators for children with special needs because they follow a rhythm. They dance to the music. They follow the beat of our drums, of any musical instrument. And we found out when we did our Dare to Dream camp in Davao with Feniksha, we had a whole morning session of tapping and just listening to music, which actually quieted down everybody, everybody's hyperactiveness. So, it's one of those calming things that you can do if done properly. Use captivating instruments to prompt a child to make requests. Holding out a drum, waiting for them to communicate, I want the drum. So using different instruments to encourage the development of motor skills will also be enhanced. For example, you can have a bottle and put some stones and you can use it as a shaker. You can have your, as I mentioned earlier, your pots, your pans, where you hit it, and there will be some music like a drum. You can be creative and think of other things that can produce sound. Music making is a perfect fit for children with special needs. Why so? Because it engages and appeals to many of their sensory strengths and needs, even if they are nonverbal. The tactile system is engaged because they are feeling the stick in their hand when they're playing with the drums. The kinesthetic system is engaged as they move their wrist and arms to strike the drum. And the auditory system is engaged as they listen to the sound of the drum. Plus the visual system engages as their eyes track the motion of the arm and the stick in their hand. Hans Christian Anderson once said, where words fail, music speaks. We cannot reconnect with each other and express ourselves without words. It feels more powerful and effective than spoken language. It also helps you bond. Why is that so? Music is a rich and beautiful way to connect with your children and deepen any bonds. Mothers have known this for centuries and now the science is showing that oxytocin, known as the bonding or cuddle hormone, is released when listening to and making music. Getting into a routine of singing to your child throughout the day, moving and dancing with them to their favorite recorded music, even using simple instruments such as rhythm sticks to create your own music or to jam along to some recorded music. Music is an easy, fun, and motivating way to connect with children and motivate them to develop new skills.
Also, it has had positive effects on children with different disabilities, providing them with a setting for their social skills, emotions, and self-esteem to thrive. It can encourage communicative behavior and interaction with others, which is something that children with autism have great difficulty with. So let's listen to this video. Whether it's Mozart, Joni Mitchell, Adele, or newcomers like Frank Ocean, music is powerful and has existed in all cultures throughout history. But why do humans find music so addictive and pleasurable? At its core, music is the combination of audio frequencies and intricate patterns floating through the air and clashing together in your ear. Much like your eyes process light, your ears process waves of sound and trigger a state of excitement and sometimes pleasure in your brain. Humans experience pleasure from many stimulants such as food, sex, and drugs. But because many of these stimulants are necessary for human survival, the body has created a system in which it rewards you for achieving them. What's really happening is the release of a neurotransmitter in the brain called dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical responsible for making you feel good. When dopamine is released following a reward, such as a delicious meal or winning the lottery, the neurotransmitter causes a feeling of pleasure and satisfaction. Drugs, such as cocaine, take advantage of this pathway by increasing the amount of dopamine, or rather, preventing its removal, causing continual stimulation of your neurons, which creates intense moments of pleasure. Music has the ability to create a state of arousal, causing pupils to dilate, blood pressure to rise, and the brain to fire in auditory, movement, and emotional regions. And even though music does not have a direct survival benefit, this emotional reaction causes a release of the feel-good chemical dopamine. Though the exact evolutionary reasoning is unclear, the amazing fact remains, music chemically alters our body and makes us feel great. And in the same way that a drug-induced dopamine surge leaves you craving more, music becomes addictive. The dopamine tells your body it was rewarded and creates the desire to seek out more. Even though music enjoyment is entirely subjective and intertwined with cultural and personal experience, the chemical effects remain consistent amongst the human race. A perfectly natural drug of happiness. Got a burning question you want answered? Ask it in the comments or on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe for more weekly science videos. There. You see now that there is a chemical, there's a neurological basis for having music in our lives, and it's for kids of all ages. Starting as an infant or even before a mother gives birth, you remember many are told you put some uh, sound uh, while the baby is growing in your womb. And there was a study that was made that upon birth, all those who heard a certain music when played turned towards that sound versus a group of babies who were not exposed to any music while they were in the womb didn't react to the sound. So why is that? Infants recognize the melody of a song long before they understand words. And quiet background music can be soothing for infants, especially at sleep time. How about older kids? Loud background music may overstimulate an infant by raising the noise level of the room. So sing simple short songs to infants. Try making up one or two lines about bathing, dressing, eating, to sing to them while you do these activities. Now toddlers, on the other hand, would love to dance and move to music. So the key to toddler music is repetition, which encourages language and memorization. Silly songs make them laugh, so let children reproduce rhythms by clapping or tapping objects. In fact, when they're throwing a tantrum, because they're just trying to get their message across, you don't get mad, but actually try playing some music or dancing to it, distracting them, and then you'll have that whole situation uh, handled. Preschoolers will enjoy singing. That's why they start school with singing songs that the children are fam familiar with. They aren't self-conscious about their ability, and they're most eager to let their voices go. They like songs that repeat words and melodies, use, ry use rhythms with a definite beat and ask them to do things. Preschool children enjoy nursery rhymes and songs about familiar things like toys, animals, play activities, and people. They also like finger play and nonsense rhymes with or without musical accompaniment. Most young school age children are intrigued by sing-along songs that involve counting, spelling, or remembering a sequence of events. 
and school-aged children can begin expressing their likes and dislikes of different types of music. They may express an interest in music education, such as music lessons for children. And teenagers may use musical experiences to form friendships and to set themselves apart from parents and younger children. Teens often have a strong interest in taking music lessons or playing in a band. So what are not, well, what are some fun ways to add music to your daily activities? Sing bedtime stories and rhymes to them before children fall asleep. So it's encouraged that you don't sing rock and roll songs because it will wake them up or you don't rough play with your children prior to bedtime. So it's a soothing, calming setup for your child to be able to rest. Teach them some songs to add to their routine, such as when they brush their teeth or songs to help them remember the names of the planets. And you can even start with naming their body parts. That's why you do head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, okay? So those are the things you start out with. Get at home karaoke equipment. Isn't this something all Filipinos are known for? Whether we're here in the Philippines or in the US, you have to have a karaoke mic. Sing some classic tunes with your children. Listen to music from different genres. Take them on a music tour around your neighborhood. And now we have virtual tours, listening to all the classical concerts, musical concerts all over the world. Going on a long distance drive, instead of your children holding on to their gadgets, let's add some car karaoke to entertain them. Plan a musical outing, such as visiting a symphony or opera house. And as I mentioned earlier, which can be done virtually now. Musical lessons, voice, or learn an instrument. Again, it may not be for all. So we have to find out what the interests of our children are. So for example, one likes sports, you engage in sports. Someone likes music, let's do music. Someone likes arts, we'll talk about that next time. Some like reading, storytelling, poetry writing, then that will be on our fourth, fifth session. Those who want to be in theater arts will be on our last and final session. So we know that it enhances creativity, develops musicality, responsible for brain growth, personal growth, learning, and it's one of the fun activities that we can engage our children with. Music comes to me more readily than words, was something that Ludwig van Beethoven said. So during this time of pandemic, what can we do? As I mentioned earlier, um, th there is now a silent pandemic that is forthcoming, and that is the mental health of children and youth. Why is this so? We've gone through the physical aspect, learned everything about the coronavirus, which is still changing every day, every week. We're going through a financial crisis for many who have lost their jobs or had to get a pay cut, all of us who are working from home. And the third one is for mental health. So learning music online can seem confusing, but with resources, music teachers across the country and all over the world say there is nothing to be worried about. There are plenty of teachers, tutors, and other lesson providers that have moved their offerings online, and many of them free for inspiration. With hundreds of music teachers now offering classes online, there's no need to travel. Children can even record their sessions to help them review what they've learned. You can have a Disney theme, karaoke sing-along, And when it comes to mastering a new piece, practice makes perfect. So why not make the most of your time during this quarantine and perfect your musical favorites? Play for an hour each day and you'll soon see results. And as they say, practice, practice, practice. Like practice makes perfect and it's an enjoyable thing to do. 
It will take your children off their gadgets, maybe on their gadgets when they have to learn something, but it is an active learning process. So these are the times I would uh, allow extra gadget time if they're doing something productive, such as learning a skill. Listen to Oscar winning movie soundtracks. Discovering the best music apps. Watch classical music themed films. Put on a play, concert, or musical and live stream it. And encourage the kids to compose their own music. So music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. In conclusion, all in all, music is an essential and important part of a child's life. You want to make sure that it affects them in a positive way. As they explore music through play, they make discoveries about themselves and the world around them. They develop a larger vocabulary and important pre-reading and math skills and strengthen their social and emotional skills, as well as their actual musical development and appreciation. All of these examples demonstrate that music is central to humanity, bringing people together, but also allowing them to find solitude. Just like language, music is a shared, expressive, inventive, portable way to be together. So I'd like to end by saying this, play the moments, pause the memories, stop the pain, and rewind the happiness. Thank you very much, and good morning and good evening to all our listeners today. Thank you, Dr. DiMolanta. What a wonderful presentation. And thank you all for the questions that are coming in. We have some really great questions. And so let me start with um, one of the first ones that came in. And hoping that you know what the acronym is. I'm, I'm going to guess at it, but I'm not positive. Is how to motivate LSENs who are not inclined to music and art. I'm assuming uh, uh, learners with special needs, maybe? is what they're meaning, how to motivate L-S-E-N-Ns who are not inclined to music and art. So I'm assuming learners, you know, like special needs learners or learners with special needs possibly. Okay, um, as I mentioned earlier, not everybody would like music, not everybody would like art, but there will be some who will go into sports or go into theater or go into reading. So we have to find the right fit because not one size fits all. And for example, a father is a sportsman, but the child won't want to do sports, then you have other options. So that's what I meant. Not everybody is meant to love music and arts, but there are other options. Another great question we have here is, um, how come a teen who is very talented in music and playing the guitar and is excellent in academics is expliciting, is expliciting attitudes of social anxiety, negativity, isolation, and low self-esteem? Would Asperger's be significant or a hindrance to his cultivation of healthy emotions? Thank you for that, Christian. You already gave me the key word. You have a teenager. A teenager is going through so many things. A teenager now during the pandemic is twice experiencing all these feelings of social anxiety, negativity, isolation, and would have poor or low self-esteem because they can't go out with friends. There was no senior, junior, senior prom. They want to be around people and they can't. So even if a child has Asperger, all the more because the social skills need to be taught. So it's okay not to be okay you can slowly get him back into using music to make him happier. Probably, as I mentioned earlier, get him involved with his friends and they can play music together. It's not something you force on them, but it's something that they will learn along the way. Many times as parents, we try to solve it for our children. But the very important thing I think that I will uh, pass on to you today is that it's okay not to be okay. When you talk about things, even for parents, 
it's important that your, your children know to a certain extent that you're not carrying the whole load onto your shoulders. So share it with them. And then the next question that we have is, what are your thoughts about using music as a medium of intervention for kids with de developmental disorders? It is something, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of our options for therapy, because many offer musical therapy now, music therapy. And it is a course that they take. It's not like you learn something uh, re related to music and then you're doing it. What are some of the things that we do? We have kinder music, we have music garden as early as six months old. This is a music and movement class that will help child develop not only gross motor skills, but also language skills. So whether you have a disorder, developmental disorder, delay, or a typical uh, child, you can learn through music. Mm -hmm. And sort of to play off of that when we have another question, it, is there any particular uh, instrument or best instrument that you would suggest to help learners um, with developmental delays or special needs, particularly those who may be nonverbal? Again, it's important to find where or what your child will respond to. Some will respond to the drum, the drum and you just beep and tap on it. Some with the maracas, some with your, uh, what do you call this, uh, tambourine. So it's anything and there's no one uh, correct instrument for a child, if that's what you're asking for. We need to find out where and to what they will respond to. Um, is there any particular genre that you would suggest for children, like of music, or is it again to their, to their liking or to their taste? We're saying that we have to find out what they like. We do not, mm -hmm. Tell them that you should listen to this. You try different genres, see what they respond to, and then that's what you can probably help them develop. You can start off with your own interest. If you like singing songs from ABBA, for, for, for example, then they like it. Because I think uh, we pride ourselves in being able to have music during our time that our children like now, correct? It's like, it's like uh, going back in time, and, and we don't know why, because I think our music was calmer, our music was much nicer, and it's not all this acid rock that we can't handle. But if that's what, you know, what they respond to, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good question, too, is that, you know, some learners, of spe particularly those with special needs, can feel irritated by music. Um, and what can we do about that? And I think there's certain pitches possibly that affect certain kids. You want to talk a little bit about that um, and, you know, how to maybe desensitize or um, how, you know, finding again that right music for them. And we can just remember, go slow and start low, right? The music, any music that's hurting the ears isn't good music. Um, what we can actually do is be able to make them listen to different kinds of sounds when you know it's too loud and it just, you know, there are some sounds, shrieking sounds that make us freak out. Same with children. So we have to figure out what these sounds are and go to the next lower level. Oh, the questions are really coming in now. Um, just so much. Just Awesome, which is so awesome. Um, but I think I'm going to, there's, there's one here I think that you covered and it's really, it's like if your kids are not interested in music and they're more interested in sports, it's okay, right? So one of the questions was, you know, what if they're not interested and they'd rather be playing sports? It's fine, right? It's you know? Fine. And yeah. you know what the problem is? If you have a child who's sports oriented and he doesn't make the grades, the first thing parents will do is you can't do your sports because you're not making the grade. They don't know that the sports is motivating the child. So the thing to do here is, I'll let you do practice if you finish this part of your work, and then we can do that later. Then it now motivates them to study, rather than taking out the very thing that will make them learn more. Do you think that music can enhance a child's language comprehension? Oh yes, most definitely. That's why we can start teaching music to our children reading to them as early as six months. And it's something you do together. It helps the bond, the mother, the child. That's why they say that it seems mothers are closer to their children, well, because you carried them uh, for nine months and then you're nurturing them, you breastfed them, and then you're taking care of them more than a father does. So let's not forget to 
uh, our fathers to be involved. They can do the reading, the musical instrument with the child so that there's some bonding. Remember, the word team is together, everyone achieves more. So doing things together at home during this pandemic will be helpful for everyone. Um, speaking of like babies and, and, and there's a question here about, you know, um, somebody indicating that when they were pregnant that you say, let your, your baby listen to music um, yes. while you're pregnant and there's a tendency they will become a musician someday. Is that true? Is, do you, do you know any, anything or any science uh, around that? Maybe we should uh, do some study on that, on, on those who are, what do you call this, who are concert pianists or singers. But there is a positive effect. Uh, I don't know of any studies showing that if you listen to that, you become really inclined and good at music. But there will be some wisdom in that, right? I'm just looking quickly at uh, the... Uh, the questions that the other questions that are coming in and I think we'll take about two more um, because we're uh, you know being mindful of, of time um, but one of the questions there are songs that um, seem to be vulgar or unpleasant with lyrics does it affect the development of a child in a negative way if so how serious does it affect the development of the child very seriously you are what you watch you are what you read you are what you see a child will follow what a mom does, not what mom says. So if you keep listening, like even with those reading, I have a teenager saying, yeah, I love to read Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Duh, and they become wimpy, right? It's like you, whatever you put into your brain is somehow subconsciously gearing you towards that end. So if you read so many of the children, even with the programs they watch on TV or the games they play, they keep playing all these games where there's violence. Then you see that they take it out on their siblings. Uh, they listen to this kind of music. So it's like, even this, uh, I forgot to mention earlier. If you could hear the sound from your child's headphone, you're seated next to him, then he's playing it too loud. Because we are now creating a whole generation of hearing impaired children. It takes 20 years. That's why they shout back at you. What? What did you say, mom? It's because they're constantly hearing all these sounds. So, again, you bought them this, this thing, right? So you'd be the one to tell them, I'm not giving you that if you don't lower the volume. My rule is, if I can hear it, it's too loud. So set limits. Again, of, if all these limits are set before they reach six years old, then you're clear, smooth sailing. I think our last question, which I think is a good question, is can a, can a learner still be able to study and concentrate or focus while listening to music at the same time as studying? Yes, I think that's one of the biggest things. It will work for some, but not for everyone, right? I, I wonder why some of, of the medical students go to Starbucks to study. I, they, they hear all this noise, but they're able to memorize, but it won't work for some kids. So. Again, what works for one will not work for the other. And as parents, we have to figure a way to encourage them to learn more. Plus, telling them, based on our experience, what is best for them. Um, thank you, Dr. DiMolanta. Um, I believe that covers um, the majority of the questions that came through because many of them were very similar. But if we do see that there's a question that wasn't answered and um, you've indicated your name here, we will make sure that uh, we get your, your answers, um, get an answer to you. So with that, we look forward to having you back next week, Dr. DiMolanta, um, and all of you. And please, um, if all of you would please make a minute or time to forward our um, videos to others, um, hit the like button on Phoenixia, hit our like button on YouTube, visit our website, um, share the information that um, we are providing with you to others. Um, and again, we look forward to hearing and seeing all of you next week. Take care and have a good day and good evening. Thank Bye, you everyone. Very, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.